all right, let's get started. So um, what I would love to do is to uh, uh, have each of the panelists introduce themselves um, and talk a little bit about what they do in the backend ONDC ecosystem. Uh, but before that, I just want to quickly capture what has been done before. So what has been said in the last few hours. Uh, some of you might have missed some of the sessions. But uh, what I took away is this. Um, what we heard Nandan do is to paint sort of the big picture. Right? He showed us uh, what happened with Aadhaar. I was fortunate enough to be a part of the Aadhaar team on, on uh, you know, 15, 12 years ago. Uh, and what has happened with UPI. And as you can see, with Aadhaar ecosystem, um, you know, the entrepreneurs did not make much money. There were some businesses which made money, which were established businesses. Uh, and then with UPI, you know, we created so many unicorns in India. And then he put the last picture of what a backend ONDC ecosystem could do. Uh, and there is a method here, right? So in terms of generating value and creating, you know, unicorns, right? Uh, if, paid, if the payment ecosystem could create so many unicorns, imagine what a, you know, just transforming digital commerce can do, right? So that's where the opportunity is. Um, and uh, Rajiv and Nitin laid out how Antler is going to help in this. And it's phenomenal. I mean, I'm an entrepreneur myself, uh, and I wish I had like this kind of support when I started out. So, you know, you guys are all very lucky to have this kind of an ecosystem. And what in this panel we're going to cover are actual operators, right? So these are people who are running this, right? So this is like people who are not drinking the Kool-Aid, right? Was, this is actually people running on the ground, uh, talking about their daily experiences. So without further ado, um, I want to uh, start with you, Sudanshu. So maybe you can just quickly talk about um, uh, just give a quick nutshell of uh, what you Sure, doing. sure. So hi everyone, my name is Sudanshu. I work with Paytm. Um, what Paytm does with ONDC is we are uh, we're probably one of the first buyer platforms that went live on ONDC. Um, currently we do, we, we operate wherever ONDC supply is available uh, and in whatever category uh, it is available in. So that means we do food, grocery, electronics, fashion, uh, bit of pharma, etc., whatever is available. Uh, that's what we do as the buyer platform. Uh, we do about roughly eight to 10,000 orders a day on the weekend, uh, largely led by food. And um, yeah, and we're soon to go live also as a seller platform on the network. Yeah. Thanks, Sajanshu. Hello. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm Vivek Lochup. I represent PhonePay and PINCODE. Uh, so, uh, on ONDC, what we have done is we have launched a separate application called PINCODE. We just saw a cool demo of our application in terms of uh, what we have done. Uh, uh, obviously, numbers fluctuate early days. Other than that, personal introduction, I uh, am part of PINCODE team as well as I manage PhonePay offline merchant ecosystem. So that's, that's me. Great. Thanks, Vivek. Hi, everyone. I am Bridge, uh, co-founder of Magic Pin. Uh, Magic Pin is India's largest hyperlocal savings app. So we've been building it for the last eight years. We have more than three lakh retailers who work with us. Um, nearly two million transactions a month. And now we're bringing with ONDC, bringing the supply onto the ONDC platform. So out of this three lakh, about 50,000 retailers are already on the ONDC platform. And as a result, we are actually one of the largest seller apps on ONDC. Hi, I'm Ajit uh, from Delivery. Um, as some of you might already know, Delivery is actually India's largest integrated logistics company. Um, and we provide logistics pretty much to merchants of all kinds, starting from really small merchants who want to fulfill one order a month all the way to uh, the large platforms. Uh, B2C, B2B, pretty much every kind of uh, logistics service. Um, we have been an early participant in terms of integrating with ONDC. Um, and as we sort of watch how ONDC uh, is working on the uh, on the on actually enabling transactions, uh, we are figuring out which use cases of ONDC do we already have a product for which we already which we provide, but also in terms of what use cases we need to build further products for, right? So uh, that's our uh, sort of you know that's our. Um, approach on ONDC, we're, as of as it stands today, we are already fulfilling orders, uh, more of the intercity kind uh, and less of the intercity kind right now. Thanks, Ajit. Vimal, over to you. Yeah. I'm Vimal, uh, founder of uh, JustPay Technologies. 
Uh, we have been associated uh, with digital public good uh, from the UPI days. We built the BMAP, uh, did a lot of other contributions to UPI protocol. Um, when we first heard about Beckon, we thought, okay, this is a gateway for commerce, and it is going to open it up, right? It is the new kind of decentralization which could work. Uh, we saw the potential in that, and uh, what started as a, uh, like a, a project that our developers started, and let's learn this by doing, right, became Namayatri. And uh, you know the numbers. Uh, uh, like, um, it's a lot focused towards, you know, the driver enablement. I can talk about that later. Yeah. Thanks, Umar. So um, I'm going to go uh, just very quickly, specific questions. Um, just double click a little bit. So um, we'll start with um, Sudhanshu and Vivek from a buyer platform. What are the biggest opportunities you see from the discovery section from both a sector, uh, so, I mean, a service and uh, sector perspective? Sure. So, see, in terms of uh, discovery, I have a couple of points, and then you know that helps build the entire hypothesis. One is that it is extremely hard to do commerce, right? Especially when you do full stack. We've seen like the incumbents have you know, spent billions of dollars in building the entire ecosystem, right? Now what happens when something like ONDC comes up is that with the whole decentralized uh, approach, a lot of effort sort of does not, sort of a lot of effort obligation gets away from you and onto other people. So you can then start focusing your limited energies because money is not infinite, right? Resources are not infinite. So you start focusing your energies on then playing on your strengths. Now what that essentially means in simple languages that, you know, at Paytm we have traffic, right? If we had to do commerce to build logistics, to build uh, an entire seller onboarding network, etc., would be a lot of effort outside of what we currently are, let's say, very good at, right? So with ONDC, we get plugged into the network, and automatically I have supply, I have catalog coming at a price, gets delivered, and then I can start focusing on what I'm good at, which is then how do I channel my traffic in uh, enabling consumers find the right products for themselves, right? And that's, uh, that's how ONDC has sort of really enabled um, apps like us to uh, sort of play a role in commerce. And then when we have bandwidth and when we're able to focus on just that thing that matters to us, we're able to play very well. For example, like, you know, uh, I'll give you another example that Flipkart and Amazon would, were doing commerce, and then suddenly Misho came along. And the kind of products you'll find on Flipkart and Amazon, you won't, you won't probably find on Misho. What I'm trying to get at is that the Indian consumer is not homogeneous, right? There are, there are users on every platform. They have certain preferences. Um, with ONDC, we are able to then marry their preferences with the catalog that is available. And that leads to a lot of innovation on each platform. Right. It's a terrific example, Misho being sort of reinventing something and this, I think, is an opportunity to reinvent uh, to the next level. Vivek, you? What are your thoughts? Uh, okay. So, uh, thanks for the question. In fact, I actually want to talk to the founders maybe sitting here uh, in terms of uh, maybe somebody picks up some ideas from here and kind of enable the ONDC ecosystem. Now, with PIN code app, what we are able to do is generate demand, right? And uh, taking the cue from Sudanshu, it is about somebody creating the supply as well, right? And that will get the flywheel going. Now, there are, uh, in terms of discovery, there are two dimensions. One, category, another, geography, right? Eventually, there will be certain supply makers who will have to go deep in certain geographies or certain categories. And I'll, let me just uh, start from the top. Of the $800 billion B2C uh, uh, size that we have uh, in 2023. More than 50% is grocery, right? And the second factor is less than 1% of this is digitized. While there are food, there are other categories where it's between 10 to 40%, grocery is less than 1%, right? The second part to that is there will be a reason why it's that, right? Uh, within this, if you see the biggest within grocery, grocery is a very horizontal category. Within this, there are like multiple subcategories. And let me pick up the biggest ones. One is the uh, staples, dal, chawal, all those things. And the second thing is the fruits and vegetables. 85 to 90 percent of what gets sold in offline market, right, is unorganized 
or rather unbranded which means that customer has to trust someone he or she starts to trust the merchant then because obviously there is that many players who are giving standardized product so there are known there is known standardization in this segment and which is the reason i start to trust the merchant available in my proximity right and that is one of the reason why uh, customer wants to go to the merchant rather than uh, wants to order online right so that's that's a customer behavior thing the second part to that is uh, if if you look at fruits and vegetables there is collective intelligence of 4 crore kiranas right in the country which is i mean ai ml i know there are founders sitting uh, working on that technology also but not got there yet to displace or replace the intelligence collected by 4 crore kiranas right so ondc allows us to ride on their collective intelligence because they know what selection is needed locally what fruit sells digitally the supply chain has to be is is that complex for one player to solve it horizontally at a pan india level right so what i mean to say by this that this is a complex problem and that, that is the reason why it's less than 1% digitized but it's solved by offline players can we ride on their intelligence get them enabled and get that to the customer that will that is the biggest opportunity i am talking about the overall industry size that's like more than 50% of overall commerce in the country now the second dimension which is geography if you look at uh, top cities top cities mainly catered to there are certain uh, players which are uh, closed loop ecosystem if you see uh, there they don't work with offline uh, merchants they they work with uh, they they have a full uh, supply chain because the margin structure is such so if you see uh, beyond 10 20 cities maximum there is no viability of having a full end to end supply chain ecosystem by one player so you have to again at a geography level you have to ride on uh you have to ride on offline merchants so if you cut now if you look at 2 by 2 i am talking about grocery i am talking about beyond tier 2 cities that's the biggest opportunity blue ocean uh space that we can actually build as and uh, ragu pointed out earlier everything else is ripe the the uh, uh, delivery network is there merchants are ready customers are ready and that's i'll take a proxy of offline uh, payments that are happening in rural more than 60 to 70 percent of digital transactions are happening in those cities so it means they are ready it's just that somebody will have to pick up the baton and create that supply at a horizontal and geography and category level that's where i see the maximum or the biggest opportunity it's terrific uh look he's literally given you a recipe the market size is almost like giving you the powerpoint for creating your vc pitch uh, i mean clearly there is a demand uh, and honestly 5 years ago there was also a demand but you couldn't have solved it because there were no payments like how do you pay right so thanks to these guys now you know everybody has a qr code right i mean this has been much discussed uh, you know uh, this is as a side aside i'm sure many of you had this experience in bangalore you know i was stopping at a traffic light you know this uh you know this person who's a beggar comes and says please give me money i am like turning around i said i don't have any change and then they wait for it and then they flash the PR, the qr code and say now what is your excuse right so this is a only in bangalore kind of moment but literally that has been enabled by these two guys uh, but on a serious note you have the payment uh, you have the demand everybody has a smartphone and now we have a superpower we have generative ai right so it's actually possible to build across multiple languages think about all of this right this can do language translation you can build all of this so i'm personally super excited about this next set of uh, bringing this this set of people onto a, a, a ondc backend network using a combo of all these technologies but um coming back to uh, earth here uh, <laughs> um bridge what uh, you are one of the largest sellers uh, apps out there when are we going to see that qr code moment you know that we just we just talked about I, i'll talk about the qr code moment because i think we are pretty close to it but just a few more minutes on spending or explaining the ondc view from a seller app perspective <clears throat> right we have to one of the two of the biggest uh, buyer apps here now from a seller's perspective when we started magic pin 8 years back our mission was to empower small merchants and there are anywhere between 30 40 50 million small merchants in the country and what they really need is demand 
Like they open a shop with the only wish that I can get customers so I can actually make some money. And that's a vision that is exactly similar to what ONDC is empowering. So it was a no-brainer for us to be an early adopter. And that is what we started with. We started with about 22,000 stores in March. And within three months, it's now nearly 50,000 stores. And we have a ready pipeline of almost half a million stores that can go online on ONDC. For us, the biggest motivation is at the end of the day, demand should go to the partner. The merchant who has opened the shop, who now has a way to actually compete with full stack, heavily capitalized, billions of dollars raised companies. So now it's actually creating a level playing field, a democratic field. And to, give, to do talk about the QR moment, I'll give an illustration. So um, all of you probably will know the tomato price is shot up through the roof. I had 150 rupees, 200 rupees. About a couple of weeks back, ONDC, NCCF, and all the network participants decided that we will do something about it. And so in Delhi NCR, we decided that we'll get the supply from NCCF and offer it at 70 rupees per kg, which is nearly half of the price you will get in the market. And that happened in less than three days. So if network of participants like us and ONDC can empower a change like this in three days, you can imagine what all can be sold on ONDC. What all use cases will this create? So in my mind, the QR moment is there. It's just waiting to be discovered by every participant in the network. Excellent answer. Thanks. Um, so Ajit, um, so you come from a very unique angle, uh, from actually delivering, you know, which is super important. Right? Buyers and sellers are there, but you are the connective tissue. Um, what is your perspective on this? Uh, and, you know, because this is where you don't have to get customers, uh, and you're coming in and using a network. Yeah, so um, just going back to when uh, delivery started, like um, 11 years back, um, one of the reasons why we were able to create, um, you know, a presence in the market was because we were able to recognize that uh, information will move digitally, and as a logistics company, uh, the in, the ecosystem did not have the ability to deal with it, right? And e-commerce was the first, uh, you know, use case of this. I mean. It's ironical Bridges here. He was one of the people who was our first investors as part of Nexus. Um, and that was the only pitch we had because it was not like we were hiring trucks at a lower price or we were hiring uh, warehouses at a lower price, right? So it was the digital movement of information. Um, and what changes with ONDC today, and that's the key part of what I think how we look at it, is that um, while in the last 10 years, it took a certain amount of effort to get all of the things done. Now, either you were a platform, you know, you had extremely complex things that you were able to sort of bring it to a point where you could pass that information to us, um, or you were a smaller player, etc., who could do the same thing with a Shopify, etc. Now, suddenly, that entire market opens up to everybody, right? Because uh, the, the problem, let's say, for example, if you went to a local merchant and said, why don't you sell online, uh, would be not because, uh, you know, he, uh, not because he doesn't have the product or he doesn't know what it takes in terms of logistics, etc., right? It was always in terms of how does he find the demand, right, online. And as that changes, right, uh, and, the, and we, we, we're seeing that happen, uh, it is truly democratization now. The missing link here, in a sense, from, the, from our vantage point, right, is fulfillment. Because that is still the physical end of the transaction, right? Uh, but the physical end is now enabled by seamless data, right? Uh, and this is just from a B2C angle. But think about it from a B2B angle. The entire B2B market from a logistics information data is today, uh, even today, 90% of B2B transactions are where somebody goes with a handheld takes down sort of you know ask for information on what is the address to deliver to what is the address to pick up from what is your eBay bill number and then sort of creates that transaction so two aspects to it one e-commerce democratizes transactions democratize information becomes easier information becomes uh, digitally available um, and b as that moves on to other parts of the market b2b Anything requiring a physical movement, if the underlying information then becomes easily exchangeable, right, uh, it also becomes more efficient, right? Because then you don't have you know all of these people who need to actually go and spend time keying in all of this data. So effectively, I think there are two uh, two parts to this happening here, which is that there is 
the base of orders increases uh, from an e-commerce consumer standpoint and b orders of all kinds whether e-commerce or not uh, you know all of the information coming together on a common protocol basically makes logistics more efficient so if you were to ask me in a sense uh, it this doesn't sort of end with actually more consumers going online it actually goes on to taking transactions of all kinds online and hence enabling them more efficiently right and that's how we look at uh, uh, ondc brilliant it's honestly a very unique perspective uh, i'm i'm learning um so vimal i want to go to you next um so you have a very unique perspective um where not only did you uh, build beam from you know a name that nobody heard of outside amarchitra katha to suddenly like uh, you know app that everybody started using uh, and then you did it all over again um and for those in the audience who don't know uh, i'm going to embarrass him a little bit uh, you know there are ceos and founders who talk about learning from first principles i want to be my own customer and so on and so forth myself included um but you know we all like to sit in the ac room and sort of think through and things through um what what uh, vimal decided to do is to actually buy an auto um put on khaki clothes uh, and actually do auto rides okay so he wanted to sit in the in the shoes of a driver to understand how a driver thinks right um and uh, sorry for embarrassing you but uh, but it's a story that i need to tell uh, <laughs> and honestly for all the entrepreneurs out there uh, if you have got the guts to do that right um that will teach you something and that's what the question i want to ask you you are a first principles thinker so what are the first principles advice you have because clearly we have seen big opportunities right this is a big opportunity no doubt i hope nobody in this room has any doubt about it but then what do you do about it like how do you start building what how do you think about it over to you yeah i i think everybody looks forward to first principles right uh, i i would say that first principles is not uh, it's just not me everybody is after first principles right uh, my my uh, maybe it's my journey that I, maybe i can talk about try to talk about briefly um uh, like promote talks that was my that is my first principle still now right like oh, the scale the scale the, the kind of unlocking that you can do the universality maybe that is the word the universality um in my early time in my career science and the universality is the one which which has huge amount of scale right if you look at how many atoms are in this room and how they are arranged it's just it blows away your mind so i can just like you know just go into that mode and like just reflect on what's going on with light and <laughs> all the electromagnetic uh, or electricity all these things going on here right we all, so we all seen oppenheimer so yeah go ahead <laughs> <laughs> so that that had been my the first kind of you know the first principles and i i used to also think about you know education a lot you know i used to think like you know everybody should think like this i used to go and teach people you know you have to learn science etc uh, etc et right so but the, i couldn't find enough um, you know satisfaction in science from a universality perspective right i wanted to really understand things and it was keeping on going uh, you know from string theory to you know um, you know it's a, it's a holographic universe so it ke- it's keeping on going right godel godel's incompleteness theorem you know if you have heard about you maybe search that so th- things like it, th- it shows uncertainty you know and quantum you go to quantum and it is that is also uncertainty so i i also saw a lot of uh, this and that was unsettling you know as if there is no first principles right so uh, somewhere from that i stumbled upon arts because of in a way frustration and i couldn't find the answer here and something i have to do and i ended up somehow getting into music uh, so in music i had this thing of i didn't have why questions my first principle was a lot about you know why 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 how is a you know, large scale only right in music somehow people talk about small things matter right somehow without me knowing that was happening i started liking small small things and uh, somewhere it was a nice journey you know happy journey a little bit went into music and uh, but somehow in music what happened uh, again in music also you uh, what what a kind of a discovery which happened is um see i i used to have my my older self used to have you know is music made up it's not is music also you know for the animals is it also for the plants it's also for the rocks because all the science is somehow more universal right music 
my my old brain again came back into music and started questioning right somewhere i but i found something in music uh, it's an experience maybe all of you would have experienced in different different ways uh, that i slipped into it in a way such that i couldn't question is not coming so i i slipped into the, this is more like the first one is universality fundamentals truth etc right the second is like you know you went after beauty and you 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 went into it in a some of it happened that uh the music that you're creating or you're listening you don't have a doubt that it is about me and it is not probably it is not about a human being it seems like you know uh, this mic is there i am listening i am it's it's real and at that time the occurrence to me what happened is oh as an engineer there is another all movies everything etc you know apple products what steve jobs talks everything just started making sense to me otherwise we are all linux people you know like is it like uh, apple is like really trying to just is it a marketing thing or is it real we used to feel that way <laughs> during that time right so the the second thing is you know beauty felt like truth or or I, at that time whatever word it is right you went into uh, something where you know something like a what you can call as a great user experience could be as deep as something like a universal science right something that we would uh, take it for granted a lot of lot of things around us are designed i think these days lot of people you know about design for me it was a introduction to design so that is the first the first thing is technology how deep and universal can you go in technology second is how deep can you go into design maybe my third learning which happened maybe very recently maybe last few years is uh, you know when you are going after you know good aesthetic etc also right maybe you exclude certain things right somewhere it occurred that you know where you didn't find beauty also there is a kind of beauty in it there is a kind of universality in it and maybe you can call it empathy right so there are there are a lot of areas that you kind of exclude and uh, to to me maybe what i thought as you know not good actually might have a good in it right so it opened another door which uh, which through that door then you start seeing everything in, like another person as not different from you right you can call i i heard this word empathy in some talk which they 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 talk about circle of empathy and all of that kind of stuff right how right now i think children also children are more empathetic the world is changing towards more empathy i i felt like you know ondc could be about scaling empathy i just felt that way you know because it's all about enabling service providers you know internet was internet was about scaling uh, you know expression and consumption of content right there is a inherent drive to express you know people are expressing their content youtube etc and there are so many people consuming like ondc about is about services backen is about services right and service has this inner and quality of empathy in it right and if a service is delivered with empathy right if a auto driver is happy and is able to doesn't need to talk if a auto driver is providing a great service right and that is like science that is like deep science and that is like great design this is this is something i'm still figuring it out you know <laughs> uh we are still you know uh, still learning about this because we we try to understand but but it's it's a lot uh, like there is also the problem of you know the world is some level divided that there is a lot of people a lot of us we are all uh, having the advantages we are in the advantages side of automation you know ai everything all this happens right ai is like a big brain right this whole automation versus people who are not part of automation right and how does it feel to be that person right and i think uh, like we are seeing opportunity to bridge this right B maybe we also might end up into that side we should know about it with all the advancements which are happening so that is that is that, that is the learning we are going through with the namayatri and ondc and uh, the what we can do in the future that's a phenomenal answer please be, give round um and i mean there are lots of nuggets in this um i suggest you connect with him offline um but uh, you know what we are trying to do here uh, is doing something the world has not done before right i've been an entrepreneur for like 30 years i've done startups in the valley i've done startups in india i've run a fund in india prime ventures so but uh, and in for the most of the part the first phase of india we were basically copying right ola was like a uber of india um flipkart was the amazon of india so but i think we are now coming to our own like china did it 10 years ago right alibaba is not amazon they did it on their own um now i think we have a way to branch out 
and do something the world has not done before, right? And Paytm and PhonePay already have shown that it's possible to do it and become unicorns, right? This is not just, we are not doing it for charity, right? We're doing this to become, uh, I'm, I'm sure all of you want to be billionaires. So, um, <laughs> so, and this is a way, so we have already shown in this particular session, Nandan showed what the opportunity is. Uh, and Rajiv and Nitin showed a playbook, right? You guys are interested, here is a cookbook. You come to Antler, you do A, B, and C, um, and, and, and then you start to build a company. Uh, and what we saw in this panel is a phenomenal panel where uh, these are real operators who are not just like, you know, telling you some theory, right? They're actually built, scaled, day-to-day, -day, faced issues, and solved them. Um, and uh, I think Vimal sort of ended this very poetically, and maybe that's the way to close this, where we bring technology, design, and empathy, right? So if you want to build a new type of network, you need to have a new type of mindset, right? I don't think you should have an old mindset to build a new network. Uh, and I think if we can bring in technology, design, and empathy, uh, and build a network, and this is not theory, he's shown it. You all saw the numbers, right? You're putting, he's putting like a million rides every uh, 10, 12 days, right, Maggie? Something like that, right? It's a phenomenal number that uh, Vimal, Maggi, Sheetal, Sean, and the team are doing. So, uh, so you, you, I mean, all of it is here. So I hope many of you take inspiration from this, uh, join the Antler program, uh, and, and help us build sort of these next generation apps that we so clearly need. But thank you very much. And